All right, so we'll go ahead and get started here. I don't want to hold you guys up. Um, this is going to be short and sweet and straight to the point. Um, so today we're going to be talking about probably one of my favorite topics in regards to real estate investing. Ultimate favorite, right? I work with a lot of um, buyers and sellers, but absolutely real estate investing is definitely my favorite. So I'm just going to minimize myself here so you can see the full slide. All right. Again, thank you guys for joining me today. Um, just as we go through here, I just want to let you guys know if you have any questions, feel free to type those in the chat. And when we get to the end of this webinar, I will go ahead and answer those questions that you may have. So again, thank you for joining me today. I know the topic for today is creating generational wealth in the Black community. But along with generational wealth, I actually want to throw another word in the pot that I think is very important as well as creating generational wealth, and that is community building. So community building means that each one teaches one. When one member of the community grows, that means that we're all going to grow because we're going to share with each other. And ultimately, um, we teach each other how to fish. And then we continue to share that within the community. And then as a community, we begin to grow, right? So if you guys have never met me before, my name is Andrea Wilson, and these are a list of hats that I wear, and that is real estate investor, real estate broker, real estate college professor, real estate housing counselor, real estate property manager, but I want you guys to know me now as your real estate mentor. The reason I put this webinar together is kind of to introduce to you guys today a, real, a new real estate mentorship program that I put together for you guys to help elevate you and get you to that next level in terms of investing in real estate. Before we kind of dig into you know, the, the real estate investing piece of it, I want to talk about this word mentor for a minute. And that word mentor means an experienced and trusted advisor. So it's important that I share and kind of break that down with you guys because I work with so many investors or I talk to a lot of people who have started investing in real estate. And oftentimes the ones that had the bad experience is because they either didn't have a mentor or they didn't find a mentor that understood what they were trying to do in the marketplace. And that is very important if you're going to be in this business. So we talk to those people, they had that bad experience, and then sometimes they even try to talk you out of investing in real estate because of that experience that they had, or sometimes they've never even invested in real estate and they just go off what they heard, right? So we all have to create our own experiences in this investor world. And you want to make sure that you find someone that is a trusted advisor that can help you elevate and get to the next level. So even with an advisor, um, you, things can happen in real estate. Real estate is not that perfect industry that you can just get into and say nothing happened, nothing could happen. Um, but with a mentor or an advisor along your side, one is, is that is experienced, it will help you get to the finish line a lot smoother. Um, so your advisor should be someone that is well-rounded, someone who has experience and that can help get you to the next level. Oftentimes you're reaching out to people that have, may have had experience because they're posting on social media and they're saying that, um, they did this or that in real estate. And so we're flocking to them, even paying money to them, but we didn't really do enough research to see, do they fit? in line with what you're trying to do and to accomplish in this in this business. So one of the things I want to explain to you guys, so I've been in this business for 15 years. I've been a licensed um, real estate agent, now broker in this business. 
And I absolutely, I live, I breathe, and I eat real estate. Believe it or not, some everyone has their passion, um, and real estate just happens to be mine. So my husband and I, Mark Wilson, many of you have met him, seen me post him or, or whatever. Uh, we actually own Brick House Realty, which is a local real estate brokerage here. So I got into the business um, because probably when I was about 18 years old, I started reading books um, on real estate investing. And I was intrigued by the information I was reading at that time. Um, and I was like, oh, you can just do this and you can make so much money investing in real estate. And so it, it piqued my interest. And so I started to like really, really get involved and kind of do my research. But at the age of 18, I really didn't have a lot of direction, definitely didn't have a mentor at that time and kind of put that in the back of my mind. And then moving forward, I actually ended up um, going to college and getting a career, starting a career as an accountant. And so for many years, I worked as an accountant in the corporate world and worked a traditional nine to five um, job in corporate America. And so I had done that for well over a decade. But I find, but I, and I've always thought about that real estate piece of it and really wanted to go back to that, but never really made the commitment to get into that. And then finally, I decided, or I was really at a place in my career. And I felt that if I didn't do it now, meaning get my real estate license, then it was never going to happen for me. So I finally decided to go ahead and get my license. And part of the reason too, that kind of pushed me in that direction is because I had children and I would always feel guilty at the fact that my kids were having a sporting event. So I needed to leave work early to be able to attend that, that child sporting events. I have four children. And so I would have to go to my manager. Hey, um, Mr. or Mrs. Could I get off work early to attend my kids sporting event? Or, you know, if one of my kids were sick, I would end up having to call off work to stay at home with, with my child. And then what happens when you have multiple kids and one gets sick, then the, it, the, whatever that virus or that illness starts to spread to the family. And then eventually you even get it. Right. So I, I hated the fact that I felt guilty about wanting to take care of my family as a mother, as a wife. We shouldn't have to feel guilty about doing that. And unfortunately, there's only a few jobs out there that really allow the flexibility for you to have a little balance. I don't think we ever get any type of work life balance, but to have a little bit of balance to where you can be a mom that is engaged with their family. Um, and doing things like it's showing up at sporting events or having to be at their school. And so it was just time. It was time for me to move on. And I just got to a place where I made the commitment. I'm ready to dive into this real estate business. So when I started off in the real estate business, I actually focused in on real estate investors. That was my niche. That was everything that, you know, I knew, I learned, I read about. So I, I got an opportunity to work with a number of real estate investors, whether that was locally here in, in Ohio, if it was out of state or even out of the country. And some of these folks were even millionaires. And so it taught me a lot in the business to, because everyone had a different plan. Everyone had a different strategy. Oftentimes when you're looking or you're trying to connect with people in the real estate in industry, looking for a mentor or learning how to get started in real estate investing, that individual typically is, is only teaching you from their perspective, things that they have done. Well, the difference with myself is while I am a real estate investor, I've worked with hundreds of other real estate investors. And so I have a wide range of information that I can share with you guys to help you get to that next level. So as we're starting to grow, you know, you'll still be able to, um, you know, as we're growing, we're sharing that information with you guys and helping you along the way. So my husband, Mark and I, we're not where we want to be. We have a roadmap though, of where we're trying to go. And we use some of those millionaires that we worked with to help create our road plan or our roadmap, right? And we want to help and be able to do that same thing for you guys. 
So these photos, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, these photos that you are seeing here, these are some of my uh, past and current clients. Uh, a couple might be on the call here, uh, but it's also the number of investor seminars that we have held, um, classes that we have taught, projects that we have worked on, clients that we have worked with. Th this is not something that we just popped up one day and said we were going to do. This is years and years and years of us being in this business and always giving back to the community, always sharing information with the folks in the community to help you guys get to that next level to be able to um, gain some growth, right? So I want to ask you guys this question. How would you feel knowing that the contributions that you have made while here on planet Earth have helped you build a better community, right? So if you have a second, type that in the chat for me. What Have you thought about that? How does it feel? I know even doing little things of giving, donating money, giving people things, it always makes me feel good. And knowing that when you contribute back to and help grow a community, it makes you even feel better because you're you're tapping into a larger community, a larger body of people. You know, Black folks, we need you. You know, we need for you to give back to the community to start sharing what you know. And as you start to learn about this real estate industry and you learn how to get started investing in real estate, you build your pipeline, you build your portfolio, you know, you start generating building wealth. At that time, we need for you to also take that information back and take it back to the community. Yes, I am here providing this information to you, but I can't touch everyone. It's important for us to all learn this business because it is the way, it is the number one way that we are going to get out of this poverty stricken situation and community and be able to grow as a community. And as you learn, you want to go back to the community and share, teach other people the importance of home ownership and the, the possibilities of things that they can do with investing in real estate. Also, I know that I'm talking about real estate here, right? I know and I understand that it is my passion, it is my love, and that many of you may not have that same passion and love for it. You may just be doing it just because you want to make some money, right, to do that other thing. We are all given gifts and ability. And I just want to take a moment and pause off of the real estate talk to say we all have gifts and ability. And it doesn't matter. Maybe you know how to how to sew, how to create a garden, how to be a cook. Whatever it is that you know, you want to still teach the community those and share those gifts that you have with the community. We're not sharing enough. We're not teaching our young um, kids that are growing up how to do these things and how to also build community. It's going back to that mindset of each one teaches one. As we be continue to build community, we will start to see a shift, especially in the Black community. We will start to see a shift because we all know how to fish for ourselves. We are stuck in a community right now that is, we're killing each other in the Black community. And part of that reason is people are just trying to survive. And so they are trying to find their way out of the jungle. And when you are in the jungle, you do whatever it is. That means lie, steal, cheat, whatever, to crawl your way out of the jungle. Whether we like it or not, it is what it is. But when we start to give back to the community and share our gifts that we have, we will start turning people's mindsets around and they will understand that they can have a better life for themselves as well because now they will have the skills in their hands to be able to do something else. So why real estate? Real estate um, is so important because when we talk about and we talk to lenders and banks, real estate is transferable. It is a tangible asset. Real estate appreciates over time. And so that appreciation comes from what you paid for that property and um, the renovations that you've done to the property, it builds equity in there. And then what you can sell it for in the marketplace. Because of that equity, 
that you have built in that property, it allows you to do things with that money, right? So you can pull that money out. So maybe, like I said, real estate is not your thing, but you can use it as a tool to get to that thing that you want to do. Maybe you want to open a clothing store, right? Well, it's really hard for people just to walk into the bank and say, yes, Mr. Banker, I would like a loan so I can start this clothing boutique. They will laugh you out of the bank. But if you owned a piece of real estate, you will be able to pull the equity out of your house and use that money to go ahead and start that business. If any of you have kids, are you stressing over the fact of how you're going to pay for college and get them to college? Well, real estate is the way that you could be could be able to do that if you choose. You can you also use that money to make the repairs on your house. Going back to that last conversation that that you know I was just having, this is why it's important for us to take what we learn back to the community, especially talk to the young, because this earlier that we can get people into this world of owning real estate in their teens or their twenties, then the better the the more equity that that property will build over time so that when they need to pull money when they're ready to start that business when they're ready to go to college that money is already there they're not backpedaling trying to figure out how to get there so so i'm going to present this just a little bit diff differently to you guys right i know many of you are on social media that's probably how you ended up here today have you ever been on social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, and you've seen people post things, a GoFundMe, where they're looking for money to so that they can bury a loved one? In my opinion, I know that they're doing what they have to do, but it's quite embarrassing that as a Black community, especially, we have to go this route or this is the means of how we have to bury our loved ones because we don't have enough money to do so, right? Well, if they had owned a piece of real estate, they could have potentially pulled that money out to be able to bury your loved ones. People are dying and they're leaving their families with debt. They are people are dying and they are leaving their families with debt. And then when they do leave and this, this earth and they do have a piece of real estate, the family members have not learned the benefit of owning that real estate. So as soon as they can, they are taking that piece of property and they are selling it off for money for today. And they have nothing to show for it for the future. It's important that we also not only teach people the importance of buying real estate, but also the importance of holding onto that real estate for long-term gains so that we can then pass that down to our children and our children's children and start to leave a legacy. I recently had done another webinar where I talked about John D. Rockefeller. John D. Rockefeller is his, what he left behind is now taking care of seven generations. So not to say that we will be able to make that, but that is a wonderful goal to have. But can you imagine if you could just leave behind enough to take care of one or two generations behind you? What have you thought about the difference it can make to have for your children? You know, if they were able to, you know, inherit this property that you left behind to be able to live in. But we have to, before we're gone, have to instill the things um, and the idea that we need to hold on and keep hang on to grandma's house and stuff instead of always selling it for today money. So the other thing that I want you to realize about all of this is that I'm not saying that you need 100 properties, 40 properties. You don't even need 10 properties. I'm talking about simply having one, two, or three properties can make a difference in many people's lives, even one property. But anywhere from one to three properties, if you own those, it will make a complete difference in many people's lives. So this is definitely an important lesson we can't ignore. Uh, we need to master the real estate strategies. Rich people do it all the time. When we think about many of the real estate, I mean, I'm sorry, many of the millionaires and we look into, you know, what made them or a millionaire and how do they keep their millions? And we look into their portfolio, we're often going to see that real estate is going to touch that. So it's important that we learn and understand these same type of, of strategies. And then we must, 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 must build community um, to make it much bigger 
better and stronger. So one of the things that I want to stress, um, especially when it comes to me, it doesn't matter where you're at. Sometimes people are embarrassed to talk about where they're at, um, but it, it really doesn't matter. So I've been building and preparing this all year long, all 2020. Some of you have shared in on some of my webinars that I have done, some of the products or trainings that I have done. But a lot of a lot of that information I was actually testing out for this moment today to present to you for on Black Fi Friday, this mentorship group that I put together. And so because I've been teaching and doing and hosting real estate investor seminars for so many years, one of the things that when I when it comes back and I talk to people like, have you got started? What's going on? Are you ready? And a lot of times they will not, people have not started because either they didn't know where to get started or they were just afraid in the end to actually take action on it. So I realized that. So as building this together, I want it everyone no matter where you're at you have no savings bad credit no construction experience you don't understand the numbers you're just not sure how to get started it doesn't matter where you're at we're going to meet you where you're at with the understanding that everyone who comes in they may be coming in at a different place but we're going to get you to that next level but there's just one question one question that we have to think about in all of this is number one how bad do you really want it? Because we all say we want something. We see someone else doing it and it seems kind of cool and exciting. But when it comes time to take action and put in that work, eh, I don't know if I really wanted this thing. So number one, you have to really decide that this is something that you want to do. And with anything that you want to do and when you really want it or you want to be a certain place, then that means you have to put in some work. You have to go that extra mile and, and do what you said and commit to what you said you were going to do. So do you want it as bad as willing to give up some, some of those designer brands, at least temporarily? Oftentimes people focus on buying those liabilities before they focus on buying assets. I'm going to teach you in this group to focus on buying those assets and using those assets to buy those luxury brands that you may want. So it's not that we, you see people say, oh, the, the luxury brands. It's not that you can't have the luxury brands. We just oftentimes purchase things out of order. We have to focus in on the things, those assets that are going to help generate and create more money, right? So you ever see at the beginning of the year, a lot of people get income tax dollars and then they take those dollars and they go shopping. Well, now they have to wait a whole nother year before they get another chunk of money versus if they would have taken at least half of that and purchased something, started a business, you know, went back to school, learned a new skill that would have helped produce money until they got that next check, then they could have recycled that money over and over again. And that's the same thing here that we're going to talk about and teach you in this mentorship of just, just changing the order of operation of how we do things. And we just want to take time, take a small pause in how we shop and where we spend our money and take those money, that money that we have, and it allow us to go into some assets such as real estate to be able to get to that next level where where we're trying to go. So one of the things that you definitely have to think about, so when people get into the real estate business, they their eyes get so big because they see someone else on social media or on the internet or YouTube or whatever, and they're buying these big properties or doing these deals. And you have to remove yourself from that um, because there's success in those smaller deals as well. And it takes time to build and get to that level. I mean, sure, we all want that property with a hundred doors on there where that will allow us to bring in the income immediately where we can take vacations when we want to take vacations. We can live this luxurious lifestyle, but we have to build that, right? So that goes back to having to do the work to get into it, um, to get to that level where we want to be. So you may only have 5000 or $10,000. You're going to get into real estate with only five and $10,000, but it takes for you to have a understanding of where you're at, have the patience to be able to get to the next level, 
never abandon the goal and always work on things like still building a pot of savings, still working on your credit and doing those things in the background while we focus in on some deals that you can get into right away. So you may not have even thought about some of these things. It may not be where you want to be today, but it may be a vehicle or a tool to help grow your pot of money. So your first, if you don't have savings, then we need to build a pot of money for you. How can we build a pot of money, right? Here's some ways that you can do that. Mobile home investing. You can get into mobile home investing anywhere between five and $10,000 easily, right? You might not have thought about mobile home investing, but maybe that's where we started at. You make some money and then you take that chunk of money and you move into that next project. Airbnb, you can get into Airbnb without even owning the property, signing a lease on the property. And now you started collecting some money doing Airbnbs. You have land contracts, you have hard money lenders, there's house hacking, and the list goes on. I have not even given you all of those opportunities listed on here. But if you're on someone else's IG page, they may only be talking to you about like wholesaling on properties instead of giving you wide range, big picture of what you could be doing in real estate to meet you where you're at in all of this. Right. So that is so important that you you have a well-rounded mentor through all of this. So, so this is the mentorship that I've been talking about. <laughs> so we are offering it for $299. Um, so the, the amount of the information that you're going to receive as part of this group, as part of my community, um, is, is priceless, in my opinion. It's worth thousands of dollars. Um, like I said, I've worked with a number of real estate investors from small, small guys to very large millionaires. Um, some of my clients, um, spend anywhere from, you know, just under $3 million on investing in real estate, where I have some people that only spend $10,000 investing in real estate. The, the guy that's close to 3 million comes in with a different strategy, right? Their strategy is going to be looking at holding on properties three to five years, and they usually have a target or goal. They're trying to offset some money instead of spending them, their own personal money out of pocket. These are the type of things that rich people do that people lower on the totem pole. We don't think about these things, right? These are the th some of the things that I'm able to share with you as you get through and start moving to that next level. So we will have a monthly video lesson um, to access and, and the archive lessons. You'll have access to the group online mastermind, online brainstorming session. We have a member price and discounts on anything else that we do down the line. Um, access a private member forum community, which is on Facebook. Access to resources such as credit repair, title company, hard money lenders, private money. You get weekly updates, and we are going to be doing some tours of properties. So, again, we have if you have credit problems, you're going to get credit repair solutions at no charge to you. Um, again, I think I mentioned at the top, I am a certified. Um, housing, real estate housing counselor. And this is what I do. I look at credit daily. And so I can help you rebuild that. That's all part of the process. But while we're building credit, we are still going to look to grow and build a, a real estate portfolio. It may take some time. It may take six months. It may take a year. Whatever it is, you just have to be committed to the overall process. So this mentorship is meant for you to take action. No more showing up to, you know, lives or webinars like this. It's meant for you to actually take action to get to that next level, you know, where you need to be. So if it's credit here that you need, it's going to take a little work, right? It's going to, we'll help you get through those credit issues and challenges, but it's going to take for you to help with everything on that end as well. So I'm sharing everything that I know about real estate investing with you guys in this group. And that is my commitment to you guys and anyone that joins this group um, to help build community. 
One of the things, oh, I didn't mention is that it also includes my ebook that I wrote, Make Millions in Real Estate real estate one house at a time you actually get that book we're going to walk through that book there's a lot of lessons like how to uh quote a job so you get that understanding from that and we'll walk through that with you so you have an understanding of how to you know estimate a job on a project that you're looking for so you will have immediate access to the Facebook group. And then in December will be the our first um, group coaching call is when that will start. And then lastly, with all of this, is that the group is going to be limited to only 20 people. Um, I'm only taking 20 because I want to keep it intimate. I want to be able to focus on each and every one of you. So I feel 20 is just enough for that will allow me to do that. So I just want to thank you guys for joining me today. Um, it definitely, time is definitely ticking before we know it. It'll be 2021. We'll be singing Happy New Year's. And so I want to make a change in 2021. 2020 has been rough for a lot of us. Um, and so we we have we realize that we might need some additional streams of income. And I want to be the one to help you through that process. Thank you, guys. Um, if you are interested in, in signing up, um, you should have seen a link pop up. You'll also receive an email after this as well. But you should have seen a link that popped up for you to join. So I'm going to go through. I see that there were a few questions. So I'm just going to go back to answer those questions. Marlon, I see. What you say is your dream to help build up your community. Yes, we all it's gonna take it's going to take all of us. It's not just one person. I think a lot of times we see people and they're looking for one answer. There's no one answer to making our communities better. It's going to take the community, it's gonna take all of us. Each one teaches one. And the more that we know and educate ourselves, then we can go out and start talking to people. Even this year in 2020, if we look at like Black Lives Matter and the br police brutality and everything that has gone on, we've seen, a, I've seen a difference this year in the amount of um, knowledge that people have been willing to receive lately, the amount of information that they're giving out. It, it definitely has been encouraging. Um, a group home, Richard, a group home is definitely something that you could do. I have a lot of clients that do have group homes. Um, I have a lot of clients that do have group homes and that's kind of like their niche market. So you definitely can start that. I can help walk you through what to do, what to look for in those situations. Um, and then who are you going to go after? Because some people go after um, elderly people. Some people go after like military or veterans. So knowing that and then knowing and understanding that you may, the type of group home that you have, you may need to have someone there, uh, staff and the food preparation. So I, that part of it can be challenging as well. Um, yes, Sharnice contribution is a gateway to God's blessing to another. Absolutely. We have to do God's work. And that is going back to the community, sharing, building each other up and doing what we were called to do. I have a question for you as well. Okay. Um, Richard. Oh, did the sound go out? Angel, did the sound start working for you? And then uh, Richard, do you want to, um, if you want, you can send me a message um, and then I can answer whatever question you had. Is there a person or can it, it be brought as a group? It um so the the mentorship is per person, so it would be the two ninety nine per person. The mentorship is ongoing. Um, it is there's no it's just a one time fee that you pay, and then you're part of the community um, from there. 
So my, I will tell you guys, my long-term goal is to, um, I'm working on a crowdfunding platform so that anyone that has smaller dollars, they can get in on larger projects. So that is what the ultimate goal is. I don't know when I'll be able to roll that piece of it out because that has a lot of regulatory, you know, um, requirements for that. So I'm working on that piece of it, but it's just a one-time fee and it's just ongoing at that point. And then Richard, I see you said that you own property for a few years. I'm looking for a investor to help with the renovation and possibly partner up. Partnerships are always really good just because the partnerships, um, you gain that experience bringing them in the money. You have to look at the numbers on that to see what would make sense. From, from that standpoint, but there's private lenders. There are lenders that will just do that, that will just finance the, um, the renovations for you. So I don't know what you mean, Richard. What is the process of finding the right investor? Are you talking about partner investor or are you saying, or do you mean um, lender? So if you can share that, if you're still here. And I think that it was all of the questions. So Holly, I was asking because I have a friend in Chicago that have partnered up with three other people and they are looking to invest here in Cleveland, Akron area. Um, so to be part of the mentorship, it would just be, it would only be for one person. Um, so per person, but if they are just looking for properties in this area, then we can help assist with that. But for the group, it's going to be per person. But if they want to come here and invest in Cleveland, yeah, we can help them get started investing in Cleveland, you know, and find potential deals. The part of the mentorship is you're going to get kind of information on, you know, work lenders, you know, your preferred lenders, your preferred, um, just really walking you through how to quote, you know, you're looking at these properties, but a lot of times people don't know how to run their own numbers. They're seeing deals from wholesalers out there and the wholesaler is telling them it's good numbers, but you don't know how to run your own numbers. So you don't know what is a good or bad deal. So this is really building that foundation for you um, so that you know what you're doing. Um, and so to, to help you out through that process and really have someone. So then you've been given some information. Now you can take that, bring that information back to the group to say, Hey, this is what I was thinking. Is it worth my time or should I move forward in this direction or what should I do? Either or from what I was told, there's a lot of investors who charge a high interest rate to see a return on it in, on their investment. Yeah. I mean, so um like hard money lenders there is going to be it's supposed to be short-term loans so it just depends if you find private money private lenders could work a little bit better and when you think about private money you can think there's a lot of people that have like a 401k sitting somewhere that you could potentially give them a quicker return on their money than what it's doing in their 401k so there's people that have hundred thousand two hundred thousand dollars whereas you might only need like fifty thousand dollars that would be willing to do that and that would be a probably a cheaper form of money for you um, but if you go hard money, then, you know, they might charge 10, 11, 12 percent on your money. So there's going to be a, there's pros and cons to everything. Sometimes you have to start out using hard money where it's a higher interest rate to get to where you're going. That's not the, your long term solution. That's just short term to get your foot in the door. And then after you've done a couple deals using hard money start building up your reserve and or looking for some private money or a partner like i said somebody that has a 401k 
Um, because even if you have a 401k, we, we here in Ohio, there is a company here that you can roll over your 401k into that is into a self-directed IRA, that self-directed IRA, they can invest their money and do rental properties or fix and flips and not receive any penalties for pulling out that money. So, um, yes. So you, you, I see you say you need help finding those type of investors if, if you have those resources. Absolutely. That's that's part of the, the, the thing of what we're doing in this mentorship group to connect you and help you find private money, hard money, you know, all of those things that you need.